We are tape rolling. Quiet on the set, please. You're back with us here on the 700 Club Asia, and it is our great privilege to have here with us a guest. He's Canadian. He's a Bible scholar. Uh, he is a prophetic voice to the nations, to our nation. He has stu been studying the Bible for over 40 years and studying biblical history and the events in the Bible, prophecies as it relates to what's going on now in the world. And we are just so privileged that this man of God is here for such a time as this. He was last in the Philippines some two years ago. And uh, he spoke to several pastors. He spoke here at the 700 Club Asia. We want to welcome him back, uh, Joseph Dumont. Joseph, thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. It's a great privilege. And uh, you're here two years ago. You're here again now. Uh, and, you know, everything is ordained by God. Uh, it, any particular reason why now at this particular moment? Last time I was here, I showed you the sabbatical and jubilee year chronology. And it's hard for people to understand, but we are in the 120th jubilee cycle. Daniel 9 talks about 70 shana, 70 weeks. Those weeks are feast of weeks, which are 49 years. And that started with the Exodus, which is what this time of year is about. Mm -hmm. The Exodus, when Moses was told to go and get the people, 70 Jubilee cycles later brings us to the 120th one, now. What's the significance of the now, bring 120th? The 70th week, it's been misinterpreted, and I've gone to the Hebrew to show you what it says. It's been misinterpreted, and everyone believes it's about Jesus, and it's not. It's about the tribes of Israel. Mm -hmm. And those tribes in the 70th week will be cut off and be as if they never were, because they will not, did not, and are not obeying God. So that is the, 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 my heart's desire is to get people to understand that because everyone just thinks it's just a joke. It's just religion. It's going to, you know, Jesus is, what's that expression? He's coming back so, so, some other time. So, so Joseph, when, when the tribes will be cut off, who is going to run with the torch? How, how will the word of God spread? How, how will the, the people exclaim, hey, Jesus is coming again. You, you better straighten up your act. God does nothing unless he first tells his prophets. And I get scared to say that because then that means people think I'm a prophet or I'm claiming to be a prophet. I'm just a servant, the same as you are. Anyone who reads the Bible is a professing what God is saying. Mm -hmm. So I've read the Bible. I understand who the 12 tribes are. They're basically the white Anglo-Saxon nation. The white Anglo-Saxons of England, um, Canada, Australia, the United States, those nations, Holland and some of the Northwestern European nations, they're going to be cut off and be destroyed because they're now the most adulterous nations in the world. They, anything goes in those countries. Anything goes. But, but also, Joseph, in those nations are some of God's very anointed you know, men and women that are speaking now to the world. I mean, these this great evangelists and, 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 and TV personalities that are taking the word of God and, 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 and speaking, uh, you, you know, righteousness. Are they? If they are, then why is their nation so... N not changing. Not changing, yeah. right? I don't know why I'm able to understand this stuff, and I don't know why the doors are opening up here in the Philippines. For me, a white Anglo-Saxon from Canada, but they are. And I see it every time I come here. Miracles are happening, and unbelievable situations are taking place. I'm meeting people, meeting people in high up in office. How does that happen? You know, but it is. And we've been explaining that to you. But the message that he's shown me this past, what, three months is for the Philippines. It's not for some other country. You know, the isles, the coastlands in Isaiah. We went through Isaiah 42, Isaiah 60 and 66. And it's all about the coastlands and what they're going to do in these last days. And... My heart goes out because it's my people, my race that's going to be annihilated, except for a remnant. But it's the Filipino people that these islands are talking about. Now, we, we, you know, we're, we're in a, a very small time frame to talk about this, but on my website, 
that whole article with all the documentation is there and for free for anybody to have. And what's your website again? Sightedmoon.com. Sightedmoon.com. Yes. That site with the S-I-G-H-T, huh? Yes, sir. Okay. S-I-G-H-T-E-D-M-O-O-N.com. All right. So, Joseph, you're saying that the Filipinos are called, many prophets have said the Philippines has a prophetic, prophetic de dest destiny in the end times. So what, if, if, we're a, if we're Filipinos hearing you say this now, what should we do? What, what should the country pre prepare for? Right now, in front of your Senate, last time I was here, they passed a bill. After I spoke in front of some of the Congress people, they passed a bill to make the laws of God the national laws for the country, or some of the national laws. You have Muslim holy days, but you don't have God's holy days. Leviticus 23 are God's holy days. And these are the things that are going to unify the nation of the Philippines. I come here and these people are bowing down and kneeling down in prayer in public. And I'm standing, and I don't know what's going on because I'm not paying attention, but they're all kneeling and praying. And I'm humbled to meet the humbleness of the Filipino people. In all of Asia, this is the only nation that is a Christian nation. Look around you. There is no other Christian nation here. And when the Bible is talking about the coastlands or the islands east of Jerusalem, in the far east, that rules out Greece and, and the Caribbean and right. the British Isles, and it leaves only these nations. And even if there are other uh, islands in, the, in, east, in Southeast Asia, none of them are Christian nations. Malaysia is oh, yeah, not, no. Yeah. No, they're a Muslim country. Right, right. So, you know, just by deduction, you end up at the Philippines. <laughs> so you come here, and the people are so humble. They are, they got all of their taxis, their jeepneys, everything. God is with us. Repent. Like, you don't see that in the West. You maybe have one sign covered with a tree that nobody sees. But here, it's everywhere. And everyone talks about the Bible here. And I have to get over my, when I first came here, I was hesitant. I didn't think people wanted to hear about the Bible. But you guys talk about it all the time. It's everywhere. Your pastors are respected. Your, your teachers are respected. And the Philippines is an awesome place. Yes, there are people here that don't know. Yes, there are people here that are trying to learn and, and are hanging on to statues thinking that's God. But we re read it in Isaiah. Their statues aren't God. But the heart, their heart to hang on to that statue is telling you the zeal that is here in the Philippines to know God. And it says in Isaiah, the islands want to know God. They want to know Torah. They want to know the Bible. And yet, where, where is this being taught? You know, in the Senate, we started to say that. The Senate has this bill. Now it's been passed through the Congress. Now the Senate is looking at it. But the Senate is also looking at the Sogi bill. So you can have Sogi and, and the curses, because I talked about the curses last time I was here. Right. Or you can have the, the laws of God and the blessings. Tell me another nation in the world that has the laws of God as their constitution. Only one, Israel. Israel and yes. the Philippines already loves Israel. And during World War II, you, you, you hid some of them, right. Jews. So what I'm showing people now is that the white Anglo-Saxon nation, the United States, Canada, Australia, uh, England, are going to be destroyed. Yeah, what you mean, actually... Joseph is now. Now the white Anglo-Saxon have they have passed on the baton. Their, their 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 job is done. No, they never did their job. Oh, they they Israel didn't run was, the race. No, they didn't. You can't talk about the Bible in public. What, what about the missionaries, Joseph, that went all across the the world from from the England, from the States, gone to Asia, <coughs> bringing you the word of God. You will know them <coughs> by their fruits. Where's the fruit? The fruit is we now have my prime minister running to the front of every gay pride parade he can get in front of. We had President Obama. Now, thank God President Trump is there, but he's also in trouble. But President Obama endorsing the United Nations Human Rights, which is promotion of LGBTQ rights. Where's the fruit? You are trying to adopt American Western standards of SOGI and other things. So where's the fruit? Are you going to turn this law down or are you going to pass this law for, to unite the people here of the Philippines under God? What are you going to do? That's the decision that you have to make and you, you people of the Philippines have to make that decision. I can't make it for you. I'm not a Filipino. 
<laughs> it's a big surprise. But so, you have to make that decision. So as a Filipino, Joseph, what, what are we called to do in these last days? What is the Lord saying to you? Isaiah says, Isaiah 60, 60 and 66, Isaiah 42. There's another one that slips my mind. But basically, he's calling to the islands. The islands yearn for his law. The islands sing praises to his name. Where's that happening? We were on a mountain the other day, and everyone's singing praise to his name. Two different groups. They're singing it here. They're not afraid to talk about him here. The islands are called out. Now, in these last days, the islands are also called out to collect all these remnants of Israel. The refugees, the, where are the white Anglo-Saxons going to run to when their cities are destroyed? Yeah, that can't happen. That's the United States, the strongest army. This is God who destroyed the strongest army of Egypt at this time of year, but 4,000, 2,000 years ago. The Filipinos are going to protect and, and collect the whites. And then they're going to bring them back to Israel as a grain offering. It says in Isaiah 66, starting verse 19, as a grain offering, and some of the Filipinos will be made into Levitical priests. When has that ever happened in the history? A Levite was a Levite, and no one else could be a Levite. Levite but now by, God just said... By, by birth. Yeah. By birth. Yeah. Now God just said he's going to make some of the Filipinos Levites. That's an awesome blessing for the Philippines. And so what's your job? You, Peter, and, and, and the 700 Club, and the people that work here, you have these facilities, you have cameras, you have lights, you, you have the ears of the Filipinos. Tell them this message. Shout it out. Tell your senators, vote that down. Let's become a, a, a Christian Hebrew nation. Let's do it. Let's not just sit there and be quiet and shy and polite. You got to stand up. You got to take a stand. You got to let people know. You got to sound the alarm. And you got to tell them because your mission here is so big and so crucial. So, okay, so it says in Isaiah 60 that they're, they're going to bring them back in the ships of Tarshish. How is that? And they're going to bring their gold and silver with them. How are you going to do that? Can you do that? No Can way. Pastor no. Ike here in Manila do that? Can I do that? I don't even have a, you know, a little dinghy. That's a government situation taking place. So the government is taking these ships and, and collecting all these people. And then the government has to provide the military to guard those ships and guard that gold as it's brought back to Israel. That's a big time. Up. This is so huge. It's unbelievably huge. And to allow those people to come here and, and like, we're not talking a thousand. We're not talking ten thousand. We're talking millions of people, refugees. There are 540 million uh, Canadians, Americans, Angles, uh, British, and uh, Australia. And that's not even counting some of the other ones. Mm -hmm. 540 million. So if you take a remnant or 10%, that's 54 million people. Yeah. They're not all coming here. Some of them will be in the, the, the death camps of Germany or Syria and other Muslim countries, but some of them will end up here. So you have to be able to absorb maybe 10 million people and house them and feed them for not just a year, not just a few months, but this is 10 years according to the sabbatical jubilee cycles that I understand. So when that happens, Joseph, of course, the, the Lord will provide the finance. He will provide the, the whatever it, it costs, the technology, um, the infrastructure, all of that is going to have to come from the Lord for us to fulfill our prophetic destiny. You will know them, their faith by their works. It's not just, I'm waiting for God to give me something. I'm waiting for God to provide. You have to go out and As do it. As a nation, it. we got to step out in you faith. you got to step out and do it. And I stepped out in faith by coming here. And when I got here, Pastor Ike had so many meetings set up. And after I got here, the doors started to open. Unbelievable doors, miracle doors opening up for me to come and share this message. How does that happen? You know, again, going up to the leaders of this country. You have to do your part and step forward. And once you step forward, those doors open up and he will make things happen. I don't know all the details. I just know that the Philippines are going to collect these people. They're going to take this message of the Bible to the Gentile nations around here. You're the only Gentile or you're only Christian nation in all of Asia. China needs to hear it. Korea, North Korea needs to hear it. 
Malaysia needs to hear it, Vietnam, Cambodia, all these countries need to hear it. Who's going to do it? It's going to have to be Filipinos. Yes. Yes, and that's what it says. And, and, and the brown skin is accepted <laughs> everywhere, right? right? Yes. The, the, the white skin uh, sounds off an alarm it from does. a mile, but the brown skin is, uh, you know, adjustable. It's accepted. That's right. In Isaiah, it talks about that, and we mentioned that this morning. Uh, the, the, the islands of Kedar. And Kedar, if you look it up, is uh, uh, ashy colored skin. Right. And you look up the, the ancestry of Orpher and Tarshish, and it's Joktan. And Joktan was the son of Eber, which is the Hebrews. So the Filipinos are also Hebrews because Joktan means short and of, of little regard. So what does the one thing the Filipinos um, export? Manpower. Manpower. Nannies. Nurses. Caregivers. Caregivers. <clears throat> domestic givers. And you're all over the world. Everybody loves you, but you're not seen. You're behind the scenes. But and now know, God has taken the least. But you know, Joseph, what's unique about the caregivers? The Filipino agents of God are inside their homes. Yeah. Already. Already. I mean, nobody can get up close and personal like the caregiver. He's already got it yeah. working. Yeah, he's got that plan set. He's got it. All we got to do is open our mouths yeah. and talk and, and tell obey. people about this book. Amen. The Bible, not just Amen. the book of Revelation, not just the New Testament, from Genesis to Revelation, he's the God of the entire Bible and not just one part. Amen, amen. Joseph, thank you very much. I know you've got a heavy schedule, <laughs> but thank you for sharing. Thank you for stopping by. And God bless you, sir, until the Lord brings you back again. Thank you for having me and allowing me to share this message because it's, it's killing me to get this out. So thank you and the people of the 700 Club and those listening. Amen. Go to the website. All the details I have are on the website, setamoon.com. The article was just published yesterday. It's free. Copy it, download it, share it with everybody. Everything on the website's free. Please share it. Thank you for having me. Amen. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Okay, now, uh, just to cut, it's one long piece, right? I, I ask a question. Like, so, Joseph, for the Filipino, what are we called to do in these last days? And then I'll stop him because he already answered that. Okay? So I'm, I'm I just want to put that. a, yep. I'm, I'm just going to put a break in the, okay. yeah, to get them hanging. I mean, I'm going to give them a hanging question. <clears throat> Sir, all I can do is put some more questions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Uh, well, if we ask that, it's then you're going to have to do this in three or four shows. It will be too long already. I'm ready. I don't know. What does Kata say? Do you want, Kata, do you want me to ask about the blood moons? No. Huh? Wait, I'll show you something. I found that on Facebook. Oh. I posted it.